sweet. <laughs> Your demonstration was wonderful. <coughs> no, 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 I'm good. Um, yeah, like, I, like Pam said, I met her. I was the patient of hers back in January. Um, and I was kind of distant at first, I guess, but um, as I returned visit after visit, uh, she and I, I just started talking, and I'd like to talk a lot. <coughs> and she, um, I just felt like that I wanted to give her a cookbook just to share a little bit of my story with her. And she surprised me and said, I want to get the moms one for Mother's Day. So I hope you ladies have enjoyed your cookbook. Um, but my name's Tracy Wilde, for those of you that don't know, and this is Wendy Ballard. <coughs> Um, I, talk, I won't try to talk too long, but um, I do, I told Pam I don't like to write stuff down. I usually just pray and ask God to tell me what to say, and um, I don't like to be too, I guess, close-minded. I just want to do what the Lord says. Um, but we're here today to share just a little bit of our testimony, and... I don't want leaving, I don't want you to think, gosh, that poor girl has endured a lot in her life. I want you to leave here thinking how great God is. And I was doing a Bible study earlier in the week, and I don't know why this scripture had never really stood out to me, um, but it just spoke really volumes. It's Luke 18 and 27, and he said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. And through our testimony and our story, I just want you to think about that. It's not anything that I did or Wendy did. It's just through what God has done in our lives. Wendy, um, <clears throat> back in 1994, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And I got pregnant with Jocelyn, which is here, my oldest daughter, um, had a great pregnancy. She was, everything was good. Got pregnant with our second daughter, Lindsay. And after just three weeks after she was born, in December 1998, I became really, really terribly sick. And that started the first of our journey. Um, I had went into surgery in 1999 with a crushed duodenum, and in 1999, also in January, I left the hospital with an ileostomy. From 1999 until January of this year, I've had, I think we've calculated nine surgeries, major surgeries. Um, I've had over 50 units of blood, two platelet transfusions, and in one of those surgeries was a liver transplant. Um, I'll never forget the day that I woke up from having a, my gallbladder. They did a procedure and was gonna remove my gallbladder, and I thought I had died. Everybody was all around me crying and sobbing. I thought, am I dreaming or am I dead or <laughs> what has happened? <clears throat> and they told me that I needed a liver transplant. Well, I was a kid that when they came around in school and said, don't drink, don't do drugs, this is what your liver is gonna look like. And I was very, very fortunate to grow up in a home that my parents did not expose me to alcohol. I wasn't tempted by alcohol. And I made it through high school all the way through with no alcohol. But this, I had to have a liver transplant. And I thought, oh my gosh. But I'm gonna tell you, God is very, very real. And he spoke to me in, a, in an audible voice. And he said, you're gonna have a transplant, but you're gonna be perfectly fine. I'll never forget it. And soon after that, my friend, Wendy, um, when she found out what was going on, um, I was sitting down at mom's house and 
Tim and Wendy, her husband and her, she came up to, to mom and dad's. We were sitting on the swing. And I knew what she was coming to tell me. And she walked up on the porch and she said, Tracy, um, I want to give you half of my liver. And I thought, you're flipping crazy. There's no way. I, you have two small kids. You're not related to me. No way. No way, no way. But she said, this is what God is going to have me to do. And I want to read you the scripture. Um, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. Now, Wendy and I have not all known each other. Probably, we were pregnant with each other, Hunter and Jocelyn, at the same time. Um, Wendy started going to church, to our church, 91. So I had only known her maybe five or six years. And when I first met Wendy, she had long, beautiful, curly hair. And I looked at her. And I thought, she is so beautiful and angelic. There's no way that I could ever be friends with her. She's just perfect. And Wendy is truly a kind and God-fearing woman. And if she had not obeyed what God had told her to do, I wouldn't be here. Wendy, do you want to talk now or do you want to? Sure. <laughs> I'll let Wendy talk for just a minute and tell, tell a little bit about it. I'm not as prepared as her as far as notes, so I'm, I'll, but anyway, I have here right now my dad's Bible. <laughs> He's alive. But he got this when he was nine years old. The same God that he learned the scriptures from is still alive today. His mom and dad took him to church. They were Christians. And there's even scriptures in here that were written down on a piece of paper that talks about the plan of salvation in different verses and stuff. My dad told me to pray. Anytime I was feeling bad or something going wrong, I said, Daddy, pray, pray for me. My mom, she's no longer here, but she's in heaven. She was the same way. And she sang beautifully, and she sang for the Lord. And my daughter reminds me of my mom. But they both love the Lord, and they taught me to trust in my Lord Jesus. So I knew when Tracy was sick, I had to pray for her because she had small children. We had small children. Found out we had the same blood type. And the Lord told me, he didn't say it in an audible way. He told me in my heart that I need to give her part of my liver. And I wasn't afraid because my mom and daddy taught me not to be afraid. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. But what's really interesting and definitely from the Lord is I'm from South Carolina. She's lived up here all her life. My husband's lived up here all, our, all his life. And we met at Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and we got married, and I moved up here with him. If the Lord didn't allow us to meet, then I wouldn't have been up here. So it was his plan from the beginning, before he created the earth, for his glory. And I thank him for that. And I thank him for the for the Lord giving me my my daughter Morgan and my son Hunter because if he hadn't have done that as well, 
I probably wouldn't have been as close to Tracy because we ended up going to Lamaze together uh, when we were pregnant with our first child. But the Lord planned that, and I thank him for that. Amen. But uh, Tracy should not have been alive the day the surgery took place. When they took her liver out, it was already dead. And I think they were amazed. And as soon as they put my liver into her, it started immediately working beautifully. The, one of the surgeons said it was so beautiful. It just started working immediately. But it was the Lord that allowed that to happen for his glory so that people, she, she's not shy. I'm shy. He knew that she would tell everyone about what the Lord has done. And most of the time, she takes the words out of my heart to let people know. And I just thank him for that. But there's been so many miracles that have happened then, in 2002, with that. And even today, it still happens. Miracles keep happening. And I just praise his name, that he's the same God then. In 2002, he's the same God when my daddy was little. He's the same God now, and he's still working in people for his glory. I don't know what else to say right now, but thank the, the Lord is coming. Hopefully soon. <laughs> I love you. Thanks for having us. Um, it's funny, Wendy said about taking the words out. One of the things I wanted to talk about was growing up as a little girl, my mom would share stories with me about how my great-grandmother would always pray about everything. If she lost something, she'd pray about it. If she needed something, she prayed about it. If she wanted something, she prayed about it. And so as a little girl growing up, mom had installed in me in the scriptures too that, and the, and the Bible says, let your heart be made known of, of what you need and what you want. And the only way is if you really, really, really want to, to know God is you have to, you have to try him. Try him out. Pray for your keys if you've lost them. Pray for your shoes. Pray for a parking place. I mean, that's just, when you trust God, you either trust him or you don't. And I trusted God. And I trusted God from a little bitty girl all the way up in a scripture that we clung to that I clung to during this whole entire series of events was that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. And a mustard seed is a tiny, tiny, tiny seed. And if you bite into one of those, it'll give you a powerful punch. And I, I'm just thankful that just my little bit of faith carried me. Wendy talked about not being afraid. I mean, I, I, she's right. I, the doctors were totally amazed. I was black and they call it death gray. And to look at me, you, I mean, you probably would never think that I had had anything wrong with me other than a few press, cat scratches I've got on my arm right now. But my, eye, my eyes were orange. My fingernails were black. My lips were sunk in. My kidneys had already started to shut down. My liver was totally gone. And, and the doctors say it's called death gray. And there were four other people in the unit with me. And they were all bedridden in a fetal position. And I was up walking around. I went, walked to get a haircut. I, I, we had 15 people join us, and I made sure they had water in their rooms. I walked into the surgery that morning, just <clears throat> excited to see what God had in store. Because if I died, if I made it, or if I didn't, I was going to win either way. I was going to heaven. And when you hurt for so long and struggle for so long, I was ready to go. I wanted to go. But I had two little babies at home, little babies. Five and three. 
and a husband. And I wanted to see them grow up. And so now my oldest daughter, Jocelyn, graduates this year. She's going to Western next in just a couple of weeks. Lindsay's going to be a sophomore, and I've enjoyed every minute of the way. But God has been so good to me. And it truly is a miracle. It's, so, it's just funny that you used a demonstration of God's miracle here, but he's still working miracles today. Now, I'm not saying it's a miracle on my part. It's a miracle on God's part. I want to give you an example, another example. Um, we owed, after everything was done, almost $200,000. We put together the cookbook, and uh, Wendy did a singing. And before our singing, my pastor took our bill and put it at the feet of me and Anthony, and he prayed over this bill. I didn't work. I couldn't work. We had two kids. Our house was very small and humble, and but we ha didn't hurt for anything. And when we went to make a payment, start making our four hundred dollar a month payment, Anthony called to make it, and she said, "Honey, you don't owe us a dime." And I, he said, "What? We just set up our payment plan." She, he, she told him, there's somebody mysteriously has paid your bill. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, I don't know who did it, but I'm going to tell you, I grew up in a home where my parents tithed, my grandparents tithed, both sets, and my, they were faithful to God. And so we don't owe a penny. So the money that we made from those cookbooks and those things, my, I gave it to my mom and my sister. And so still today, 12 years later, we're able to pay off medical bills that come in from there. Now, I mean, that's, I'm, God is good in all things. In all things, he is good. And now standing before you, I am in stage three kindergarten. So I have the kidneys of about an 80 to 90 year old. So just about three weeks ago, was it, I guess, I was in the hospital about to do dialysis. And in the meantime, my white blood count drops down to where you had to put gloves on and a mask and to come in my room. But a week later, I'm out. I'm standing here today, and people are like, are you not afraid to get out in public? Nope. Because God's going to protect me. And I'm just silly enough to think that wherever God wants me to go, that's where I'll go. I'll get what I gotta get. I don't eat organic food. I eat what I want to. I run, I play, I do. Because I just trust God. And in everything that we're facing and everything that we're dealing with, again, it's, it is what it is. We can't change anything. We've, we've dealt with it. We've lived through it. And I, I'm just, I'm thankful for the opportunity that God, God allowed me to be a little southern girl that went to Minnesota, where everybody wants to hear a little southern girl talk. And if you've ever heard my daddy talk, he's a little bit worse than I am. So everybody wants to talk to these little southern people. So the people that we got to talk to about Jesus Christ, and the, the people that have brought along from in our way that we've been able to talk to, I wouldn't change it for anything. I'd go back and do it again. I'd go back and do it again. But I want to read a scripture, one more, and I'll close. <clears throat> when Wendy first came to Minnesota, 
um, she sat down beside me and she said, Isaiah 39, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall be mounted up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. So today I'm walking here before you to tell you that God is still God. God loves us. He cares for us. He provides for us. He's my strength. He's my rock and my salvation. Amen. And I, I love him, I love him, I love him. And that's, that's it. Thank you for the opportunity to come and share just a little bit of our testimony. And I could just tell you story after story after story of how good and what examples that God has, has been there for me. And my, my transplant coordinator, uh, I'll tell you this, when I came in to the hospital, I carried a two-gallon Ziploc bag of medication. It took me three pages, front and back, to write down the medications that I took. So my transplant coordinator said, well, don't get too excited. You're going to carry this color suitcase. You're going to have a transplant, and then you're going to carry this color suitcase. So today, I take a little handful of pills. God said to me, you're going to be just fine, and I'm just fine. Amen. Just kids, trust, try God. Try him out. The only way you'll know if he works is if you try him out. And he, he will be faithful to you. He'll be faithful to you.